I've learned and experienced a lot in the short time I've been in Seychelles, and there's something I've realized. The thing about places like Seychelles, places that are seen mostly as a tourist paradise, is it's easy to forget that there is a life outside tourism. A status quo, just like anywhere else. Visitors arrive in droves by the day, but there are people who actually call this place home and experience it much differently. For me, the best part about traveling is the education, interacting with locals and learning about their lives. What is their real day-to-day -day experience in a place? And how can it help me put my visit as a tourist into perspective? For many years, the Seychelles Islands were uninhabited, until the campaign for colonialism and the slave trade brought British and French colonists to the land. Although it is said that Seychelles was most likely already known to traders from the Arab world. In 1756, the islands were claimed by France, and a few years later in 1770, the first group of settlers arrived. The party consisted of a few white men with their African and Indian slaves. Over time, more African slaves from neighboring Mauritius were sent to Seychelles to work on sugar and coffee plantations, and Seychellois Creole emerged as the means of communication between the different races. In the years that followed, more people from the Asian continent would also arrive in Seychelles, resulting in widespread intermarriages and ultimately a population of mixed descent. Being here has shown me just how proud Seychelles people are of their ancestry. A lady I spoke to in casual conversation repeatedly emphasized, we are not white people, we are mixed. You will find many of us with dark skin, curly hair, and blue eyes. We are very proud of our mixed background. In Seychelles, most of the population identifies as Roman Catholic. Hinduism is the second largest religion, followed by Islam. Throughout the islands, you will find churches at almost every corner, a few mosques, and the famous Hindu temple in Victoria, the capital, which, I should add, is an impressive structure. As for Seychellois cuisine, most dishes contain seafood, tropical fruits and vegetables, and exotic spices. The cuisine is influenced by African, Asian, and European tastes, and is exactly what you would expect from island cuisine. Oh, and by the way, a big delicacy here is the fruit bat curry. All things considered, with the prevalence of African, Asian, and European influences, it's fair to say that Seychelles culture, much like the people, is one big mix. <laughs> Um, Seychelles, everything, the people, the culture, the, the nature, you know, it's, 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 it's a holistic love. I like everything in my country, okay? Mm -hmm. I love the our Coco de Mer at the Botanical Garden. This is our big seat we have here in Seychelles. And what about Seychelles people? What is it about the people? Oh, but this question, I have to ask you this one. Yeah, you no. can ask. I, I want to know from you also. Okay. Uh, the, the people are friendly. Um, uh, they are friendly. They are very welcoming, you know. Um, how can I say? Um, they love sharing, you know. I like my people because my people all is friendly. It is friendly. And Seychelles is a beautiful country. Seychelles is paradise. Paradise. Anytime you want to come to Seychelles for enjoy yourself, you can come. Here we are a small country and um, we don't have much, uh, a lot of people. And nearly everybody knows everyone here. Not everybody knows, but we are small and we know each other. You might go through some challenge with some of them, but that challenge is part of your growth. You know, it's there to help you grow and become a stronger person. So, you know, like God sends different people in our path. So you just, you know, like take it as it is and, you know, keep on building relationship with positive, loving people. So, yeah. Even uh, for the disease we have, the COVID, 
Even the COVID we have, we didn't have a lot because we have took the vaccine. We have got it since before the, the disease started. And we thank God for that. I like working, enjoy, that's all. Yeah. Yes. And it's relaxed. Yeah, relax. Yeah, but now I'm, I'm my age is uh, uh, 68, but I prefer working instead of sleeping at home. I will continue working yeah. to keep myself uh, good. Strong. I don't drink, I don't smoke. Only going for swimming. Yeah. yeah. During my time here, I have been struck by how kind-hearted the people are. They are extremely hospitable to tourists and are especially laid-back, as is typically the island vibe. But above all, the Seychellois people are impressively resourceful. They are talented at arts and crafts, frequently painting pictures that tell cultural stories and making colorful souvenirs for purchase. I noticed something else in Seychelles. You see, everywhere I went, women seemed to be heavily involved in the society. From gas station attendants to local bus drivers and more, women played an active role. So to help me understand a bit more about the Seychellois enterprising spirit and the influence of Seychellois women on society, I paid a visit to the home of Salifa Bell, who lives with her husband William on their family farm which I like to think of as a mini tourist attraction. This is the that's original the, mahi yes, tortoise. The and this is, the, the wow, this is the, the only one. Wow. They do have female. Mm -hmm. They do have female, but that's the... That's the last the, male. Yeah. Wow. They tried to get it at the botanical last time, mm -hmm. uh, at least to try and have it reproduced. Uh, estimated 187. 187 years old. Wow. You can come in. I'll see if I can get something you can feed them. It's a happy old dude, that one. Yes. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So you can feed. Then you can get the pictures. What is it? Because when you cut it, it looks like a staff. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's... <laughs> oh. How does it feel to have the last male mahe tortoise in your uh, own farm? Hmm. I should say it should make me feel special, right? <laughs> But, you know, it has been with my husband far way longer. He should okay. answer this question for you. <laughs> and that's because it's, it's like his baby. So yeah. let him get that for you. Okay. <laughs> Your family member? Well, we've had him for about 40, going on 40 years, I suppose. Wow. He was about 130 at that time. So how does it feel to have the last male mahi tortoise? Well, it would farm? be nice to have a partner for him so he could actually get a few more. To, you <laughs> keep know, the line going. Keep the line going. <laughs> and he's, he's much more healthier, stronger than most of them. So, hmm. yeah, Wow. Know, it's a pity. Is it like common knowledge that you have the last tortoise? Mm -hmm. Well, they, they did, Environment did a study a long time back and they, they said they, well, they didn't know actually a lawyer mm. came to see me and said that it was the last one and he wanted to exchange it for 20 or something other ones. I said, mm -hmm. sorry, no. Yeah. If you can give me a female to breed with, that'll be okay. Then you can take some eggs away, but mm -hmm. it never happened, so. And how long do they live up to? Mm. Who knows? Everyone, wow. people, people come up with all kinds of things. I don't know. Mm. Um, he's probably the oldest one around now. He's mm -hmm. the only one from Mahi. Yeah. He's the only one with the, his mark, original mark off 
transport. Those two marks there. He either came on a pirate vessel or he came on a trading vessel. <laughs> Normally they, these are given as gifts to the family at, when you, well, a son is born, not oh. daughters. Normally sons, when a son is born, they give a very small one about that big. Oh. They have all these little age lines on them. So you just count those. They just count them like this. One, 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 one. They're very small lines. You, look, you have to look really careful. Like that bit there is about 20 lines. So it's kind of like how you age trees, up. like you can count yeah, the lines the rings. from the yeah. trees. Yeah, mm. that's it. He likes it if people scratch it here. <laughs> we have a tiny one. This is the big one. We make, uh, we make salad, okay. chutney. Yeah. Salifa's farm features all kinds of crops and fruits commonly found in Seychelles. Coconuts, jackfruit, starfruit, breadfruit, passion fruit, golden apples, cinnamon, and so much more. You got ants in them there, you'd have to wash them to get the ants out. Okay. Mm -hmm. What fruit is this? This is called jamalak. I don't know what, I don't know if it's an English name, something apple. But even more impressive is the new house she's building. So this is my project, my baby project I'm doing right now. So you designed this? Yeah, building. I designed that. As I said, that's the best thing about being in Seychelles. Yeah, opportunity. As, yes, the opportunity we are given. Mm. Uh, you just have to know, to know when to, to take the opportunity you're given. So um, this is, uh, as I said, my baby project. <laughs> mm. wow. You see, as an architect, Salifa has always planned to design her own house and oversee the entire building process. But what is unique about this project is that she's using materials from the farm environment, like wood from the trunk of the jackfruit tree and others. I'm blessed, definitely blessed. I couldn't be in a safer place, um, a more cultured place where we know as individual, you know, as individual who we are. And the best thing is the opportunity as a female that mm. I get. Um, where I came from and where I am right now. Opportunities I've been given, um, I'm not sure many female out there can say the same. Mm -hmm. You know, where you're being oppressed and we're free. <laughs> nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> Salifa's farm is a small but potent illustration of Seychellois life. It's like there's this unspoken emphasis on simple living. To take and nurture what the environment blesses you with. Reinforcing the idea that, really, a lot of what you need is around you. Seychellois living is a reminder to me that life feels better with a sense of community, a sincere heart, and oneness with nature. Maybe that's why these people are so chill all the time. <laughs>